Hey there, welcome back to Sebastian's Rootin' Tootin' Rodeo. I mean, the evil within. Today we're going to explore the village a little more. And make our way to that ominous church looming in the distance at the end of this beautiful vista. Still, still smashing things. Still, I... I'm never gonna get tired of Sebastian just smashing shit with his bare hands. This looks like some kind of a marketplace. It looks deserted, just like everywhere else. We gotta keep moving. Now, Joseph is going to perhaps become a little annoying in this next segment, because that's all he is going to say is, we'd better hurry up. We'd better keep moving. But you don't want to do that, because if you take his advice and just move on, you'll miss out on quite a few supplies. First and foremost, this med kit. We're gonna want that. Does it seem a little harder to move lately? A little bit, I guess? I, I mean, maybe for Sebastian. Maybe it's like when you're in a dream, you know, and it feels like you're running through water or whatever. If I've... I might have mentioned this already, so forgive me if I have, but when you use a med kit, it impairs your movement, and Sebastian will, like, stumble around, and you can't fire any of your guns, which is why they try to get you to use them in, like, remote locations, but if you stand still, the effect wears off a lot faster, which is interesting. And, uh, the more you use, the, the higher your health gets, the, the less time it takes for it to wear off in general. Father was a stern man, proud, and I thought intelligent, but he was also pious, a believer. Somehow he always supported the church no matter what the newspaper said. He waved away the allegations as if they were infallible. The wretched, I think the I vermin, smell those things. the stern, they might be nearby. all were taken in by that church. They were promised salvation and eternal life. But there's nothing they could promise that I couldn't take away. Interesting. Father was a stern man. Oh, well, I accidentally activated that again, so that's just gonna keep playing while we're walking around. So it seems Rubik uh, has some connection to Elk River, the village we have found ourselves in now. The wretched, the vermin, the stern. Oh, we're taken in by that church. And his father, being a, a religious man, was connected with the church in the distance, the one we are apparently being routed towards. And you may recall the safe room newspaper and missing persons poster talking about the church and a supposed cult and about about how a man was abducted uh, and sent to Beacon. Now how, how these things are connected, still a mystery, but I think it's safe to say that there is no doubt that they are. This segment is really great if you want to just get splinters all up in Sebastian's knuckles. Just break every box, every barrel, they've all got stuff in them. There's also, around the corner on the right, I missed it, but there's a, a big container of gel over there that I always miss because I look at the key and it's like, oh, well, I got everything, but I didn't. Where do you suppose we are? More like when? This architecture seems straight out of the Middle Ages. Yeah, but there's electricity. Elevators. This place can't be real. It's like jumbled up memories. Something like that. That is a very strange assumption to make. I mean, this could just be like a, a rustic old style village, you know. They have electricity in places like that. Oh, shit. 
Shit. Let's hide out in here for a minute. Is this what it was like, Seb? After the accident? Well, I never put a gun to my head. No, of course not. Just quietly sank into a bottle. We can't all be perfect. It never affected my work. But hey, you read the IA report. You know I didn't report you because I was worried about your work, Sebastian. <laughs> what else is there? We don't have time for this. I need my partner here. I'm counting on you. Find something? Maybe. It's all symbols. Some kind of cult. Could be useful. See, what did I tell you? I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about. Tenuous connections are still connections, you know. I think I'm okay. We should probably get going. Unfortunately, Joseph, we can't get going because I hear the telltale sounds of a safe room. A, a not-quite-so-safe room, I guess. I decided that I was going to start calling it that after that gag I made in the last episode. But, uh, it's kind of a mouthful, so I'm just gonna, just gonna abandon that joke where it lies, I think. Interesting. Still, uh, still wondering what it would be like to teleport around like that. That's gotta feel really weird. Which I guess is why he recoiled in, you know, horror. Nice. I will take that. Still not enough for what I'm trying to save up for, but that's that's okay. Let's see how we're doing on map fragments. Uh, pretty good actually. We we got close to half of them. You can see there's uh, one square in the middle uh, near the top that I missed. Uh, it was in I think chapter 3 and uh, I never picked it up but I went back and got it off camera so oh well This church just really gets sketchier and sketchier, doesn't it? And it seems that uh, a whole bunch of members of the church just packed up and disappeared all at once. Very interesting. Based on, uh, based on Ruvik's diary entry, I think we probably know what happened to them. Okay. Thank you for waiting, Joseph. While I admired myself in the mirror. Now we can get going. I like these coffins. Very, uh, very ornate. I'd like to be buried in one of those. Hold on a minute. Let me climb up here and see if I can get a look ahead. You all right? Yeah.
Hey, that's Kidman. Who's that she's with? What I found seems to be in working condition. Go on ahead, I'll cover you. And finally, Joseph gets much more useful because now he has a sniper rifle of his own. Sweet. Oh shit. Find cover, they're shooting. Yeah, you you go, Joseph. He is he is a crack shot with this rifle. I don't think he will miss any shots that he takes with the thing. Yeah, that's not fooling anyone. Oh crap! Well, I have rattled the monkey cage, Joseph. Little help. Oh, thanks, buddy. Wow. <laughs> Remind me never to piss him off. When he's got a sniper rifle in his hands. Uh, with an axe, eh, it's kind of a mixed bag. Sebastian, that should lead you out near the path to the church. Keep going, I'll cover you. You got it, buddy. I I mean, there's really no going back, so, you know, I guess I guess there's really nothing I can say otherwise. <laughs> oh, that guy got crazy owned. Oh no. Well, we're fighting the next mini boss. I guess I'll call this guy a mini boss. So, uh, so this is nine, or or nine. It's German. This, his name is whatever. He's a uh, he's a big, big lumbering jerk. And now he's a dead big lumbering jerk. Now's your chance. You can finish him off. What a tough fight that was. Oh shit, here comes 10. Get him. Yeah! So I felt kind of bad. Um, because I have not been making very good use of my electric bolts and my freeze bolts. Well, there you go. That's how good they are. Now you can see why, uh, d why I don't use them very much. Shit, a dead end. I'll look for another route. Let's meet up by the horse statue there. Because here's here's the thing, right? It it would trivialize the game for me to make use of them in the way I just did for, you know, for any situation. So if I used all of my trap parts to make electric bolts and freeze bolts and then just unload it on enemies with the shotgun, the game would become really easy and, and it would become very boring to watch. So, uh, thus far I have tried not to, you know, overuse them. But as you have just seen, uh, pretty effective. <laughs> Pretty, pretty effective. I don't actually know where Ten comes from. He just kind of hang. He's just kind of hanging out over here. And then when you start attacking Nine, he busts through the wall. I might actually have their names the wrong way around. In which case, whoops. <laughs> Wait, there was something about a horse in that house back there. Let me see what I wrote. I guess we go down. I guess so. Uh. 
See, the third time I wouldn't be as surprised by it, I don't think. The, the third time I'd be like, oh, I'm back here again. Yeah, okay. That This is the gimmick for this chapter of my life. Uh, no keys. I mean, because we, we were just here, but, you know. Just checking how much gel I have. Quite a bit, actually. Uh, 9 and 10 give you quite a bit. You do have to kill them to move on, but they are pretty tough customers because, you, I mean, you can see how easily they knock me over. So, they, um, it can be a pretty tough fight if you don't do what I did. And sometimes, even if you do do what I did, if you haven't upgraded your bolts any. I'm just sitting here mulling over what I want to buy next with my gel. And like I said, in the in the coming chapters, we are going to start getting green gel by the truckload. So, it's not like we are going to have a dearth of green gel in the near future. You don't need to worry about me. I mean, you did land on your back. It's, I mean, it's an honest question. I mean, the ladder, the ladder doesn't even go down all the way to the ground. Oh, jeez. Sorry, buddy. Uh, there's not really anything we can do for you. Now, some people might be wondering, uh, these cult allegations, is there any truth to them or is it all just exaggeration? Well, I don't know to be honest. I, I don't really know. I can't tell. Are you a fan of puzzles? Oh, you're not? Oh, well, well, don't don't worry. This one's this one's kind of simple. But first, hey, look. <laughs> we'll we'll just wait for that to get over here. What do you make of this writing? Doesn't mean anything to me, should it? Now, hold on a second. I jotted something down earlier. Well, you you take a good look at that. Seems the sacrifices need to be lowered onto the proper altars, and the safe way to him will be open. Interesting. Well, why don't we just examine uh, these pillars a little bit? Well, the only one with the broken off handle uh, has a cross through it, and is already lowered down. But hey, it looks like we solved the puzzle, so I guess I guess that's all we need to do. I told you it was simple. Eh, wrong. It's kind of a pretty mean trick. The the game releases the spikes uh, as soon as you pull one lever, and then they allow you to walk down the tunnel. At which point the spikes will jut back out, and you will get skewered. They fool you into thinking you solved it, which is pretty good. I like that. I heard something. The puzzle is now solved for real. Basically, you just have to lower the sacrifices with the crosses through them, uh, with the matching numbers, and leave the other one raised up. But the real question is, what could these sacrifices be to? I mean, it's not like they were just, like, sacrificing for the hell of it. Check this out, too. The camera zooms out all dramatically. Phew. It's 
seems that was correct. But yeah, sacrifices are generally made for something and not just because they feel like it. What the hell is this elevator, by the way? This, why was it in water? Why are there huge guts casting an eerie red glow? Why do they get in this elevator if it just came out of being submerged in water? That, I don't understand. Like, if it were me, I would try to climb the chain up to the top floor. Like, I would not get in an elevator that was just submerged in mysterious red liquid. That seems like a pretty bad idea. But I'm not Sebastian. And Sebastian, so far, has not been known for his smart decision making. Hey! We're just gonna... You just hang out there, man. I'll just be over here. God. Okay. Well, this this room is this room is not fun. I would like to get out of this room now, but there's notes to pick up. So you get the idea. Basically, 9 and 10 were uh, conjoined twins, conjoined at the skull, <laughs> and uh, once they were separated, they were experimented on separately, uh, but still continued to grow at the same rate, to the size they were when I killed them. Very, uh, very strange experiments going on here. Seemingly unrelated. To, to Ruvik's whole deal. Really not sure what the cult was doing, but, you know. Oh, that's what they were doing. Okay. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you just want to make sacrifices to a disgusting, unnatural dog monster from hell. You know? Whatever keeps it growing healthy and strong, you know? Some people like to drink milk to build strong bones, but, but milk is not for dogs. Human corpses, on the other hand, a dog will eat that. A dog will eat anything you give to it. And I, I suppose that was their train of thought. Well, we're not doing anything with these failed experiments. Let's just give them to the dog. Oh, that's not good. Can you get it open? It's time for a boss fight! Hey! We're fighting the guard dog. It is... This is actually a really hard fight. <laughs> because any of the dog's attacks will knock you down on your ass. And while that is funny, uh, it also makes it perhaps a little bit difficult to survive. Uh, the dog also moves very fast, 
and it can jump out of the way of your crosshair. But if you peg it in the head while it's charging at you, th yeah, that happens. <laughs> so the quote-unquote gimmick of this fight is that after the dog tries to attack you, it will run away and hide in one of these bushes. And while it's hiding, you can uh, prepare to attack it when it comes out. And there's a couple ways to go about this. Basically the easiest way is to peg it with a freeze bolt and then don't be like me and get hit. Because that will basically waste your opportunity. <laughs> Ooh, very close. <laughs> Yeah, fuck you. That's what you get for bringing me to near death. Joseph. glasses back there. Fuck. Surprise! The boss isn't dead. <laughs> and Joseph has dropped his glasses. So, let's go get him. His glasses. He can't see without his glasses. Oh, that's weird camera shit. So we have a couple choices here. Uh, we could just get the glasses and run. Or... We could get us some extra gel by finishing this doggy off. I'll draw it away so you can search. So, Joseph's distraction only really works if uh, you're just running to get the glasses. Because when you start to attack the dog again, it, uh gets angry at you again. Bad dog. <laughs> and who said Sebastian is worse than Leon? He's got it in him to do one-liners, right? He just chooses not to. I bet he's thinking of stuff like that all the time. He just has the restraint not to, uh, not to say it where it would be inopportune. I mean, think of the opportunities that Sebastian has had to say one-liners so far. Few and far between, I would say. And uh, now that the dog is dead, we can grab Joseph's glasses and then loot the area. Fun fact about Joseph's glasses, uh, apparently they were given to him by his grandfather, according to the according to the art book, which is interesting, which I, I guess means that these plain old glasses are a family heirloom. I'm sorry. It's not just about being unable to see. It's about feeling normal. It's all right. Let's focus on finding Kidman. Jeez, Joseph, all that for a pair of glasses. Sometimes sentimental value can uh, be worth more. Worth more than uh, monetary value or uh, physical application. Well, in we go. See you next time.